Welcome back to Cocktails with Queens. Listen, it is so rare that viewers get a chance to see the faces behind some of their favorite entertainment networks. Well, tonight, that's changing because we're celebrating Black excellence with the founder and CEO of Zeus Network. Please welcome Lemmy Plummer. Welcome to the show. Hey, hey. How you guys doing? Hey, Lemmy. Hey, Lemmy. How are you, ladies? Hey. Beautiful Great. queens. Beautiful queens. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. How you feel? How are you feeling tonight, Lemmy? I'm great, man. You you know, I, I got my cocktail ready. I'm I've been there drinking a little bit. So so go go easy on me. That's right. <laughs> okay, let me let me were you nervous to come on? Are you kidding me? I'm nervous. I had you know, like <laughs> five different prep, you know, uh, uh meetings and but I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready. We will see by the end of this interview, let me. We will see. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into some. Let's just jump right into it now. You were born and raised in Detroit, and your parents own three television stations there. How did uh, learning from them prepare you for, you know, creating your own network? And you look so young. I, I can't not mention that. Like, you look like you just got out of college, and you're running a whole successful network. Yeah. You, you are. So, yes, yeah, thank you. No, absolutely, absolutely. You know, my, my parents... Uh, you know, launched their network in, in the 80s, right around the time BET launched. And they, they decided to go a little bit more religious and start their, a bunch of Christian networks. And so I learned a lot about television, working behind the scenes for my parents in production, post-production. So it was kind of like naturally, like just in me to want to one day launch my own network and, uh, you know, provide opportunities and jobs for folks. And so that's, that's really, you know, what I've been doing now with Zeus. But yeah, I've learned a lot. I mean, they they taught me so much about business, um, you know, the foundation that I've had just, you know, with with, uh, you know, again, all the ins and outs and the infrastructure that they built. It just it, it helped me tremendously to be able to, you know, have the tools to, to launch, you know, in this day and age, uh, uh, my own network and a subscription video on demand platform. So it's great. They've been instrumental. You know, they're, they're great advisors, consultants. And so I'm, I'm happy to have them in my life. And uh yeah, it's great. Can I ask you right. a quick question? Because I, I, I got my questions a little bit too far. Who were your parents? Okay. And what network? Did who they who start? are my parents? And, and what network did they start? Yeah, it was called the Christian Television Network. It was an international oh, network. But okay. um, but yeah, their names are Glenn and Karen Plummer, uh, okay. not the actor Glenn Plummer. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, they they are great. They're entrepreneurs, and um, they were you know ahead of their time. Like it was it was you know launching a linear channel back in the eighties, you had to go through a whole process with the FCC. And, you know, it was just, it was, it was a whole thing when they first like um, applied for a license to have a network, they got denied. So when wow. they reapplied after a lot of work, they finally got approved and, you know, carriage from various cable and satellite providers. So it, so that's it was why great. You went full speed ahead, huh, bro? I, I had to, I had to. <laughs> <laughs> had to set so. it off. You already know. You already know. So, let me, you, um, this isn't your first rodeo. Like, you were introduced, I mean, they, they introduced you to a BET deal in the beginning. You've produced scripted content um, with the Monique Show and Family Cruise. Yeah. So, what were some of the obstacles that you had to face being so young and trying to really spearhead Zeus Network to what it is today? Yeah, they, you know, they didn't really have anything directly to do with my BET deal. Um, I had a manager at the time, Mark Atkins, who introduced me to Loretha Jones, who was the president of BET at the time. Mm -hmm. And we had a great meeting with her team, Charlie Jordan Brookins and some other folks. And I, we got signed to a first look deal. And it was it was great. And like you said, I, yeah, I produced a lot of shows for the network and executive produced some shows. And um, I was 21 when I got that deal. So that was one of the hurdles, right? Being 21. Wow young executive producer at the network. And at the time, you know, the head of this network was, 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 had a ton of shows. So he was a huge inspiration for me, James DeBose. So shout out to James, you know, who uh, definitely, you know, uh, you know, had so many successful shows on the network. And so that just made me want to go harder. And so, uh, yeah, we, it, 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 it helped tremendously, um, you know, in, in being able to launch my network and, uh, and, and, you know, get, get the platform off the ground. So, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, it, it's, it, you know, the, the, it, it's a different time. It's a di different day and age, you know, our, our Zeus is a different beast and animal having a subscription service and asking people to pay for your service and pay to watch content is, is different from linear, you know, uh, television. Um, and so it's, it's a, it's a process and it's, it's, it's a beast. Right. 
Um, and so in 2013, you helped uh, develop the, um, the show Preachers of L.A., right? Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. So my question would be, you know, coming from a Christian based show uh, to creating a network that focuses on content that's like totally opposite. Like what and how, <laughs> did that, how did you go from this and you can get with that? You know what I mean? Right. Well, well, I mean, look, I, I, that, you know, for me, our programming is very authentic. I would say that I don't, I, you know, a lot of people would say it's salacious or conflict driven, but it's authentic. You know, we, we allow our content partners to, you know, be themselves and we, we, allow them to do their thing. And so when you put people and aggregate folks to come in a house or to work together or compete to date somebody, you know, it becomes, you know, a lot. And so our programming is different, but I would say as far as the preachers, you know, yes, it was a different time. You know, I, I, when I, Holly Carter and I partnered on the show and I was the full service production company. And so we, we ended up selling it to oxygen. And my goal with the show was really to humanize you know, the preachers and to show that, you know, look, we put them up on a pedestal that they can't live on. And so mm -hmm. it was, it was really about humanizing them and show that there are flawed. They, you know, they are, they are ministers, they are helping folks. They are, you know, impacting our culture and, you know, giving people hope and inspiration. But at the end of the day, they go home just like us and, you know, they have challenges and issues too. And so I think that resonated with folks and yes, it was very controversial, but the, the goal was never to spark controversy, but conversations. And that's what we were able to do. And it became the highest rated show on Oxygen. So we had a second season. We franchised it to Atlanta and Detroit. And I think at that point, you know, I just wanted to, 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 to transition into doing different, you know, types of programs. So I, I sold this show to BET called Music Moguls with Birdman, Snoop, Damon Dash, and, and uh, Jermaine Dupri, and then the, the Westbrooks, and a few other shows, uh, Living With Funny and Two Sides to TV one and living with funny to oxygen and Esquire. So it was a lot of shows that I sold. And so I just got to a point where I was kind of over the selling the shows because yes, the networks ultimately control the creative and approve the cuts and approve what's distributed. And so for me, when I, I had this desire to launch Zeus, it was like, look, we want to do different types of deals with our talent. We want to give them equity in the shows. We want to empower them so that they can generate some real significant revenue um, and that they off have of their the, product. They, off of their product. And that was important. Exactly. I think the traditional model is, you know, it, it's, it's, look, there's nothing wrong with it. I just think that what we do is, is, is different and is working and, and our, our talent is, is, is empowered and they do their thing. So that's why I say it's authentic. We're not producing them to start fights or drama or anything like that. It just happens. I mean, Joss's cabaret. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't like, you know, you're talking about Jocelyn, right? Who's an all-star who has done. Come on, wait a minute now. Come on, we got to keep it real because, <laughs> you know, we're going to keep it real on Cocktails with Queens because <laughs> many people on social media have expressed concerns about how Black women have been portrayed on your network. Now, how do you respond to that criticism? And do you have any plans of changing that narrative? Yeah, I, look, I think that just like any, any show, I mean, look, you guys you know, talk about controversial subject matters, yes. you know, it's that there's sometimes you guys may get into it. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong. We're not, we're not intentionally doing anything to make, you know, black folks look, you know, negative, like they're, 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 you know, we're not degrading or putting anybody down or, or trying to create salacious conflict driven programming. We're not, we're not doing that. We're again, it's, it's about authenticity. <clears throat> And so for us, yes, we, we happen to work with a lot of women who have a large following who end up, you know, uh, getting crunk. You, know, uh, you say it again, getting crunk, get, 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 turning up, getting lit, whatever, turn whatever, up. <laughs> whatever you want to call it, but you know, they, they, they do their thing. And so I, I again, if for me, it's not about putting people in a position where, they're looked down upon. I'm making black women look bad. I, I think that, you know, for us, we're providing jobs, you know, where these are executive producers of the show. They are monetizing in a way that, you know, most executive producers and owners of their shows will monetize. You know what I'm saying? So it is, you know, they are heavily involved in the creative. And so I, I don't like, I'll take Jocelyn for instance, or even black China, 
you know, when we when we, you know, uh, produced the Black China show, we learned that her and her mom had a, uh, you know, uh, some challenges. And we just we pulled out the cameras and shot it. We didn't but, we didn't force them. I'm sorry. Let me, let me ask. Sorry, let me let me ask you this because I'm seeing a lot of comments in the chat and I, I have to ask you this. So I totally get what you're saying about you letting folks be authentic. And we need that because we're not a monolith. You know what I mean? We're not all the same. We, we, there's all different types of people that are that are black women. Right. Um, and that's beautiful because there was a time where a large portion of our society couldn't get a show. Right. But now mm -hmm. what, what do you what, what do you say to people that say, well, where's the balance? Like, do you have plans of doing things like, OK, yeah. You know, we, we got this going on here, but we might do a new show or or we, or because this lane is so successful and it is like you're doing your thing. Do you can you. Would you think you, you you really are? We cannot take it. We will never take that away. from <laughs> You are a young black man. Very successful. Thank so you. I, so Thank with you. so much influence, I, I am curious your future plans with the Zeus Network in your programming. Yeah, that, no, that's a great question. I mean, look, we we just premiered Doses of Drea that mm -hmm. that came out yesterday. And mm -hmm. so that follows, you know, Drea as she goes on this journey, you know, as a entrepreneur, uh, as as a as a businesswoman, um, you know, a friend, you know, an actress, a model. And it's not loud and and provocative like some of our other shows. It's, it's a very mm -hmm. unique show and people are enjoying it right now. And so it, it is not as loud as some of our other shows. So we're we're we're, we're investing in programming that is different in that is a little bit more balanced. Um, you know, look, I, I invested, I invested my own money into Zeus. I did not take any outside capital. I didn't, you know, look for investors. Um, and so I, I believed in my network. We experimented in the beginning uh, with influencers and all sorts of things. And we realized, hey, maybe we shouldn't go that way. Maybe we should go this way. And so when we started putting out more authentic, real, raw, uncensored, unfiltered content, like the Black China, people were subscribing. They were watching. They were engaged. They were tuning in. They had an appetite for it. And so clearly, you're going to invest in that. But I don't have unlimited budgets. You know what I mean? I don't. I I haven't pursued a raise or 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 have been acquired. Or you know, folks have reached out. Some big media conglomerates have definitely reached out, looking to acquire us or looking to. But I haven't sold. And um, you know, the goal is to definitely diversify our programming. With, with unscripted, scripted programming mm -hmm. to create more balance. But, you know, I just ask our audience to be patient, you know, uh, and it's, you know, I would love to put out more shows, but if Jocelyn, Jocelyn's cabaret is working, I'm going to mm -hmm. invest in a season two, right? <laughs> if Black China is working, I got to invest in more shows that uh, is, is authentic. That, that people, people are watching. Absolutely. And then your well, defense, that is the business too. model. And in your defense, that's the business model that all networks do when people Agreed. like they all start with the, they go with them. Like that's you have to go for what the money resides, what the money. Resides, what the money <laughs> Let and me. I, I, oh, God. Yeah. No, I was going to say, that's the thing. You know, people ask for these types of shows, but then they don't watch it. You know, you you want a cooking show or with this show or that show. But you're not paying to watch a cooking show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's well, like, let me, we, we, we're going to have to have you back on because we are out of time. But you, I think you would be a great person to have back and talk about the business. I didn't you know spoke what to well. You gave some insight, brother. You did. Seriously. You, I, yeah. I like the way you're thinking and talking. And as Thank critical you. as appreciate... people may want to be to a black man that is running a, uh, running a network that is black owned, you, you are a yes. black man running a network that is black owned. And we and, have to commend you for that. Working. Congratulations. And I, and I thank you so much. I appreciate it. I think, I thank you guys for having me and all the support and please stay tuned, subscribe. We have one more chance premiering this Sunday, October, uh, September 19th, this Sunday ah, and doses of Drea, doses of Drea. Yeah. Chances back for season two doses of Drea just premiered yesterday. We have Johnson's Cabaret season three coming back and a plethora of other shows. So just stick with us. And, you know, I think uh, you guys will see a different, you know, lineup of programming, but some of your favorite shows too. So I appreciate the support. And we definitely are on, on in route to becoming a billion dollar company. So, know you know, right. stick with right now. Do we heard. Thing. Congratulations, Lemmy. I want to thank, thank Lemmy Plummer for joining us tonight. And uh, please check out and subscribe to his Zeus network. Be sure to follow him on all social media and look out for his projects. And uh, he has a lot more stuff coming down the pipeline. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with more Cocktails with Queens right after this.